So October has several exciting observing opportunities. We've got one of the better meteor showers and that occurs under the dark skies of New Moon. We have the last Titan shadow transit, the last Titan transit for 15 years. This is the last time to see it until 2040. We have the moon passing over the Pleiades open cluster and we have one of the first supermoons of the year. So in this video, we'll show you what to look at in the night sky in October. And if there's anything we've, we've missed or if there's anything you'd like us to include, then please do pop them in the comments below. So we'll actually start on the 29th of September. This is when the moon is at first quarter. It's in Sagittarius. And this means that for the following week, we're going to have an ever increasing bright moon as we approach full. Now, of course, this is perfect for lunar observers, but if you're more into your deep sky and more into your dark skies, I can str strongly recommend getting up early in the morning. And of course, this is a great time to catch the approaching winter constellations. And if I look at, for example, at Orion, at the start of October, it's now rising at midnight and transiting just before dawn. So it's well worth considering the horrors of an early start before work if you want to catch dark skies while that moon is approaching full. So on the 1st of October then, we start with a waxing 10 day old moon. As we were saying, that's building to full phase on the 7th of October. And also the highlight for this month is Saturn. Saturn is just past opposition. It got to opposition on the 21st of September. Absolutely great to see this beautiful planet and it's visible all night, pretty much rising at sunset and then setting at dawn. Still best seen around midnight, but that time it transits the meridian, that's when it's highest in the sky. That is now getting earlier and earlier. And I'd love to know, did anyone catch Titan's shadow transits, the shadow transits we had in September? Because I say that as 6th of October, this is your last chance. This is the last chance for another 15 years. We won't have another one until 2040. Now this one starts at 0132 universal time. For us in the UK, it's only 25 degrees above the horizon and getting lower. So it actually sets midway during the transit, midway during the transit of Titan itself and before the shadow transit itself gets underway. Now, those of you in the Americas, your best place to catch this one from start to finish, and you'll get to see both the moon and the shadow transit across the surface of Saturn. Now, it's interesting to see that with the rings still edge on, there are actually quite a few regular passages of the inner moons, the smaller moons, passing over the disk of Saturn as they complete their orbits around Saturn. So I do suggest that as the timings vary from place to place, do look these up in Stellarium or Sky Safari. If you have clear skies, do check just to see if there is a satellite transit on any particular night. Now, while you're looking at Saturn, Neptune is alongside Saturn. They're only three degrees apart, and that's well within the field of view of a smart scope, well within the field of view of a pair of binoculars. And it's actually quite cool to see you've got two planets in the same field of view. You've got this beautiful ring planet, and then alongside an ice giant, the furthest planet in the solar system. Now on the 5th of October, the moon passes Saturn and Neptune. There are only a few degrees between the three objects that actually again fit in that same wide field of view. You'll need a low power pair of binoculars or a finder scope and you actually have the three objects in the same field of view. A couple of days later, the moon is full in Pisces. And now this month, this is a super moon. So it's worth explaining that the moon's orbit around the Earth isn't perfectly circular. There's a period of time further away from the Earth, there's a period of time when it's slightly closer to the Earth. And it's all that's happening is that we have a full moon when the moon is slightly closer to the Earth. And technically, it's a little bit brighter, it's a little bit bigger in the night sky. But to be honest with you, to the casual observer, to the, the, to the visual eye, I certainly can't tell the difference between an ordinary full moon and a super moon. Inevitably, it will attract a load of media attention. There'll be a whole load of social media attention on it. But to be honest with you, I can't tell the difference. Now, on the night of the 8th and 9th of October, we have the Draconid Meteor Shower. Unfortunately, these are going to be dampened by the still very bright moon. And it is one of the smaller meteor showers of the year. The meteor showers are then measured in the rate of meteors per hour. And that's called the zenithly hourly rate. So you take the source of the meteors, the, the radiant, put it right overhead in the night sky at the zenith, measure the number of meteors, but under perfect sky conditions with no moonlight, no light pollution. The Draconids, for example, is 10 to 20 meteors per hour. The ZHR is 10 to 20. So what's that? Every few minutes, every six minutes, 
But of course you can see the zenith isn't perfectly overhead and we've got this brilliant moon in the, in the night sky as well. So the number of meteors we're actually going to see is far less than 10 to 20. But it's still worth going out to have a look if you have skier clies, if you have clear skies. I don't know how many we're going to see. We can always be pleasantly surprised. Now, fortunately, we have an even better meteor shower on the night of the 21st to the 22nd of October. This is the Orionids, and this actually coincides with the new moon on the 21st of October. Now, this is debris from Halley's Comet striking the Earth's atmosphere and burning up as they come through. And this has a zenithly hourly rate of about 20 or so. So again, one every few minutes is what we'd expect to see. And again, this 20 or so per hour is under perfect conditions, but it is a new moon. So if you're away from the city lights, you wait till Orion is nice and high in the sky. Hopefully we'll be able to see a meteor every few minutes or so. So my plan is to set up the camera, put the camera with a wide angle lens, put it in time lapse mode with the intervalometer, capturing a series of exposures. We'll be tracking the radiance as it rises into further up into the sky, and then we'll capture those meteors as they come away from the radiance. So the week around New Moon, when the skies are nice and dark, are perfect for deep sky observing. And I'd love to know what you've got on your observing list for this month. I'm off to the Southern Hemisphere. I'm going to Namibia for New Moon. And I can't wait to be able to see the core of the Milky Way, the core of the, the center of our galaxy high overhead. And then in the morning skies, we've actually got the satellite galaxies of the Milky Way, the Magellanic Clouds, two little satellite galaxies down by the Southern Pole. But with Halloween at month end, we've actually gone for some suitably spooky targets to recommend this month. We're going to stay in the Southern Hemisphere, stay in the Large Magellanic Cloud. And the first object is, well, one of the highlights of the entire night sky, and that is the Tarantula Nebula. And when you look at this through a telescope, you can actually see these loops and tendrils of gas and dust. And that does make it look a little bit like a tarantula spider in the eyepiece. Moving back. To the Northern Hemisphere, we have the OWL cluster, NGC 457. It's an easy to see bright open cluster. I can see it in a pair of binoculars. Magnitude six, nice and easy to find in Cassiopeia. You've got these two bright eyes that look like, uh, look like the owl's eyes looking back at you with a body and these two wings. And it does to me, well, to me, actually, it's more like a dragonfly than an owl. But anyway, check that out. Have a look to see what you see. Jumping over to the next constellation in Pegasus, we have the brilliant star Mirac. And if you zoom in, if you put some magnification onto the star, you can actually see there's a tiny little puff of an elliptical galaxy alongside it. It's a magnitude 10 galaxy alongside a magnitude 2 star. So you've got this incredible brightness difference between the two. And this is called Mirac's ghost, this ghost of a galaxy next to the brilliant star. And sticking with ghosts, we have the Ghost Nebula. This is SH2136. It's actually a reflection nebula. It's part of the nebulosity and dust that makes up the Irish Nebula, this huge patch of nebulosity up in Cepheus. Uh, I couldn't find it on Sky Safari, so here is a picture from Trevor Jones on Astro Backyard. So let us know how you get on then. We've got a tarantula, an owl, Mirat's ghost, and then the Ghost Nebula, all to observe around Halloween. So back to our daily scheduling. On the 10th of October, we have the Pleiades occultation. This is when the moon passes in front of the Pleiades, this open star cluster. It's just getting underway at dawn in the UK. So again, it's going to be a challenge for us here on the 10th of October. Those of you, again, in the US, those of you in the Americas, you'll have a much better time than us. That's actually visible all night. On the 14th of October, we have a last quarter moon that passes Jupiter and Castor and Pollux. On the 19th and the 20th of October, we have this narrow sliver of the moon is approaching its new phase alongside Venus in the pre-dawn sky. And on the 21st of October, we have a new moon. So this is when we have the darkest skies. That's when the moon is not visible at all. And we can do our deep sky observing all night. As the moon approaches its crescent phase on the 23rd of October, we have this young crescent moon passing both Mars and Mercury in the evening sky. On the 29th of October, Mercury will be at Western Elongation again in the evening sky. It's not best place for those of us from the Northern Hemisphere, but it will be much easier for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. So if you can see if you can pick out the most elusive planet in the solar system, see if you can pick out some of the surface markings as well. So having mentioned Mercury then, let's switch over to our planetary roundup. 
Setting in the evening sky, we have Mercury and very distant Mars. They're closest together on the 29th of October. They're not really close at all in reality. It's just a line of sight effect. And Mercury is best at month end as it approaches that maximum western elongation in the night sky. Mars is actually on the far side of the sun in January, so it's about to be unobservable. But this time next year, 2026, we'll be getting ready for the next Mars season as it approaches its opposition. As we were saying earlier, Saturn is in Aquarius and it continues to be really the highlight in the night sky, visible all night. And don't forget 6th of October for the Titan transit. Now only three degrees away from Saturn is Neptune. And here we have the challenge. Well, we have the challenge one of finding Neptune itself and then with a bigger telescope of finding Triton, Neptune's moon alongside. Next planet up is Uranus. Uranus is in Taurus. That's still plodding between the Hyades and the Pleiades star clusters. All three of these are readily visible in binoculars. So enjoy these two fantastic open clusters and then hunt the distant planet Uranus. Jupiter is in Gemini. That's starting to rise in the small hours of the morning. It actually crosses the meridian its highest at dawn. So if you're an early riser, then this is the time to catch this one. And the view of Jupiter is always changing. Not only have you got Jupiter's own rotation bringing new features into view, of course, the moons complete their orbits around their home planet. So it's well worth checking out. And with Jupiter preparing for opposition in January, we'll do a deep dive later this year. Brilliant. Venus continues its dominance of the dawn sky, but it's actually getting smaller. The phase is getting smaller as it prepares to go round, uh, round the back of the sun for solar conjunction in January. And asteroid number one, Ceres, it's actually a dwarf planet, spherical dwarf planet. That's the biggest asteroid and was the first to be discovered. That's an opposition on the 2nd of October, and you can catch it crawling against the background stars. Now, when I started writing this, there were no bright comets in October, but there's been a new discovery. Comet Swan 25b it is now renamed as C2025R2 Swan. And as I write this in September, it's actually a binocular target. It's best seen from the southern hemisphere in the western sky, looking between Mars and Spica. It's not visible for very long as dusk falls and quite how well this performs in October as it moves away from the sun, it'll get higher and therefore easier to see. But of course, further away from the sun, it will start to get fainter as well. And of course, as we enter into October, there's this ever increasing moon phase. So if you can capture it at new moon in September, this probably is the brightest we'll see it. But of course, it's a bit of a challenge while it's so low. So in summary, then, as we start October, the moon gets brighter and brighter. So best to do your lunar observing in the evening and deep sky in the morning. 6th of October, we have the last transit of Titan over Saturn until 2040. And of course, Saturn is only just past opposition. It's actually observable all night. We have a super full moon on 7th of October, a hunter's moon. 10th of October, the moon passes through the Pleiades. And we have a reasonably promising meteor shower at new moon on the 21st of October. And that's, of course, being new moon is when we can observe the deep sky all night. And I'll keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully Comet Swan will still be observable as we enter into October. So I hope you found that useful. Really hope you get out under those dark, clear skies in October. As always, let us know how you get on. And if you've got any questions or comments about what to observe next month, then feel free to put those in the comments. My thanks, as always, to the Patreons. And I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky.